Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When fat cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm baby man Just caught a touchdown from the bay Well, police were very candid about a number of things. First of all, the suspect is on the loose. There may be more than one. They wouldn't be specific on one or two suspects. Also, they made it very clear this was, as you mentioned, not a random act. They wouldn't say it was targeted, but they say that the man or the, the two people, or one, who killed these three men knew who they were. We can say with confidence that the crimes committed were directed at these victims. Three men, says the LAPD, shot to death yesterday afternoon in this exclusive area of a gated community in Porter Ranch. We do have an idea of what transpired or why it transpired, but I'm reluctant to release that because we're still following investigative leads. Police do confirm there was no break-in and no robbery in this neighborhood of million-dollar homes. And they say whoever committed these murders, one, possibly two suspects, they won't say, knew the victims. Gary Davidson, 39, who rented the home, and Benny Lopez, 46, from Anaheim, and Jesus Perez from Paris, 34. Police say Lopez and Perez did not live in Puerto Ranch. They were simply visiting Davidson. Drugs involved at all? I'm not going to comment on that at this point in time. Police do confirm that a woman was upstairs at the time of the shooting. They identify her as a friend of Davidson. She allegedly told police that when she heard the gunshots, she called out his name. And when there was no response, she dialed 911. Did she run down the stairs or did she see anybody leaving the house after the shooting? I'm not going to discuss that at this point in time. The Renaissance, the area where the murder took place, is a well-guarded community. Very little crime here. And even though people were stunned by what happened, they still said they felt safe. Yes, I'm very comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was very shocking. This is a safe neighborhood. Not only did they have permission to get into the gated community, but into his residence. And so, so whoever the individual or individuals are, or knew him. Again, no suspect. We asked the police, do you know who these people are? And they would not respond to that. Was this a drug deal? They would not respond to that either. But two other quick items. People we talked to in the neighborhood did not want to go on camera, said that that particular house where the murders took place was always known for a lot of people going in and out, noisy, loud music, parties, if you will. The other thing also is that detectives say they are convinced that whoever did these murders were inside the home for a while. They wouldn't say how long, conversation going on, and then there were definite signs that there was a struggle and then the shootings. Your point live from downtown Los Angeles, Dave Lopez. A man City. wanted in a Los Angeles triple murder is caught in the Bull City. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us so much. I'm Angela Taylor. That L.A. murder happened in an upscale neighborhood. We first brought you the news of a North Carolina connection with a push alert through the CBS 17 app. Our Amy Cutler joins us live from Durham to explain how investigators tracked one of the suspects to our state. Amy. Angela, investigators say Kenneth Peterson lives here in Durham, that he was taken into custody in his own apartment. Tonight, he remains here at the Durham County Detention Center. Los Angeles police tonight the arrests of three suspects in connection with a triple murder. It happened back in February in this gated Porter Ranch community. Among those taken into custody, 40-year-old Kenneth Peterson. He was arrested in his Wadesboro Road apartment here in Durham. Two others taken into custody in Baltimore. I would say that it was a business dispute. Investigators say at least one of the victims, 39-year-old Gary Davidson, knew the suspect 
suspects. They tell us Davidson rented the home where the three were shot and killed. It appears clear that Mr. Davidson knew the suspects and allowed them into the residence and to conduct an illegal narcotics transition, transaction on February 18th and when the murders occur. Authorities say Davidson and the suspects were involved in a coast-to-coast -coast drug ring. They tell us they were transporting and selling cocaine and marijuana. It's a significant drug operation and it was it appears to have been going from Los Angeles uh, to Baltimore. We stopped by Peterson's apartment in Durham. No answer. His girlfriend and the mother of his son says she's trying to wrap her mind around the accusations that this isn't the man she knows. Now, investigators found drugs, they say, and drug paraphernalia inside his Durham apartment. And so he's facing several charges here in Durham. He is likely to be extradited to Los Angeles to face those murder charges, though, very soon. Live in Durham, Amy Cutler, CBS 17 News. Hey, she got popular. For real mob tie shit going on. We on our way to NC. Bull City, Durham to be exact, free the boy face Diddy. Now today I'm going to be telling you guys the story of a guy that will travel more than 2,500 miles from an apartment complex in Durham, North Carolina to a subdivision filled with million dollar homes in Puerto Ranch, California. And when you hear the first part of the story, you might be thinking a nice B&B, maybe a mini vacation. But according to the LAPD, the sole purpose for this trip taken by Kenneth Peterson in 2019 was to kill his supplier in the coast to coast drug network. Now, before I get into the details of everything, I want to start things off by saying there's just some people that you just can't kill. Now, don't get me wrong. Anybody can be murdered. But. There's certain circumstances and situations that make it nearly impossible or just guarantee you a jail sentence. Now, for instance, we'll start off with the untouchables. People like judges, senators, district attorneys, or anything pretty much dealing with the judicial system. Then you also have the list of untouchables B. People like police officers, priests, athletes, musicians now like i said anybody can get murdered but when you murder anybody along the levels that i just mentioned the pressure put on police departments from communities to solve these type of crimes typically usually end with these crimes being solved relatively fast and then you're going to have 39 year old gary davidson in the case that we're covering today now, the thing that makes murdering somebody like Gary Davidson so hard is not going to be a stature because he doesn't work for the government. He's not a sports athlete or a famous musician, but it has very little to do with who he was and a lot more to do with where he was at the time of the murder. Now, it really doesn't matter where you at in the nation. If you're doing murders in broad daylight, they have one offs. But nine times out of 10, you're going to get caught. Then you have big cities like Los Angeles, New York City, Miami, New Orleans. And a lot of these cities, most action on the ground is being recorded by cameras above us. Also, in the case of Gary Davidson, who was murdered in a million dollar subdivision, just ask yourself, how many ring doorbell cameras you think they have in that neighborhood? Hmm. Now, everything will begin when LAPD will be called to the gated Renaissance community. Responding to a call for shots fired, when officers would arrive at the house on Villa Galileo, they would find three gunshot victims, all dead from their wounds. 39-year-old Gary Davidson, 46-year-old Benny Lopez, as well as 34-year-old Jesus Perez. The officers had been called to the shooting by a woman who was said to have lived in the residence and was on the second floor at the time of the shooting. Eventually, it will be determined that she was the girlfriend, fiance, or wife 
of Gary Davidson. She would explain to the officers that she would hear shots downstairs and call for Gary. And after she didn't get a response, that's when she would call 911. Now, I'm going to tell you later on how that probably saved her life. Early on during the course of the investigation, authorities would determine that the shooting was not random and that the victims had been targeted. They wouldn't say much more than it wasn't a robbery and that the victim knew the assailants as there was no signs of forced entry as well as the murders happening in a gated community where the residents would have to approve any visitors entering the subdivision. No suspects would be named immediately and four months would pass until early June of 2019 when authorities would announce the arrest of three people, two from Baltimore, a male named Travis Reed and a female named Chiquita Cook. And though it would take marshals a little bit longer to track him down, they also would arrest Kenneth Peterson at his apartment. Now with a situation like this, it could be so many variables. The plug probably cheated my man. Maybe it was some sort of business disagreement or the idea I favor the most, a drug rip, which was the reason I said earlier that calling out for Gary Davidson was probably the only thing that saved that female on the second floor's life. And I say that because the LAPD said nothing was bothered inside the house besides the men being shot. And my thought is, if they didn't hear that shout from upstairs, they was going upstairs to search out the house. Now, that's just my theory, and I'm sure more is going to come out when Travis Reed and Kenneth Peterson have their day in court in mid-March of 2023. Now, I couldn't find any information as far as Chiquita Cook being incarcerated, but I did find it weird that when she was arrested, she was only charged for one of the three homicides. So, like the first 48, sometimes the charges are dropped, lessened, or whatever. But as far as Kenneth Peterson and Travis Reed are concerned, they're set to fight it out with the state of California. Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video. Y'all hit the bell so y'all get the notifications. But when this real trill spill shit is dropping, y'all get in the comment box, y'all flood it. Y'all know the rundown. Let me know where we need to go, what gangsters we miss, what stories I got to cover, what I got wrong, all of that. And tap in with your boy on Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And y'all know I'll be back ASAP. Shit got pop a lot. Real mob tie shit.